better. I think so. Thank you for coming back. Oh, yay, look at you all right there. I am sorry, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. I'm pretty sure I know why. Um, maybe I don't. <laughs> I seem much blurrier than normal tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. I'm just gonna go with it. I seem, it, it seems like my camera is not working the way it needs to, but whatever. We are back. How is it going, Bruce? Glad you could make it tonight. Okay, let's hold on and wait for a few more people. I see that I had like 13 or something when I had to shut it off, so <clears throat> I apologize. Hello, hello, say hi. I love it. I love it when you guys talk to me. Oh, thank you, Winnie. I'm glad it's not blurry. And I'm sorry I didn't call you, my dear. Um, okay. I'm gonna hang on just a few more seconds. For those of you, though, look what I got in the mail. Oh, I'm so excited for this book. And you know what's even more exciting? It's less pages even than this book. So that, <laughs> that's pretty exciting for those people who don't like to read. I mean, look at, like, I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, the bottom one is the new one. It's not even a hundred pages. So, all right, hello everybody. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I am Mary Jo Ehrman, the author of the book, Farming Without the Bank, um, and the new book, Life Without the Bank. That one just came, not even for sale yet. That will be shortly. Um, and for those of you that are new and not been here, welcome. Thank you for stopping as you were scrolling. I appreciate it. I um, am teaching farmers how to farm without the bank by using the infinite banking concept. So we talk every Thursday night about clients and reviews of the week that I've had talking to clients and just giving you ideas of what they're doing and how they're doing it and what's happening in the farm world. And so we have not a ton of new clients this week because I had a lot of clients this week that got policy started. So I had a lot of those meetings which did not allow for a lot of new client meetings, but <clears throat> we still have several of them. If you are here for the first time and you have no idea who the heck I am, um, you can go to farmingwithoutthebank.com and then I would encourage you to get these two books if you want to listen in for a while, great. I heard the new thing is go listen to Mary Jo's podcasts and see if you like her. And then if you like her, you can go buy the book. That's the new strategy. But if you don't want to do that, I encourage you go to farmingwithoutthebank.com Grab those books and we will be talking about those, obviously, I mix all that in. But otherwise, we are gonna talk about client meetings and um, who I talked to this week and I even have a new strategy that I have never done before. And so we, I had to get very creative today and figure out how are we gonna get, what are we gonna do with some money? Um, and what is the best way to utilize that money? So that'll be a fun one. <clears throat> but make sure that you are saying hi. Hey, Sam, how's it going? Okay, there are 25 of you on and only three people said hi. Come on, you guys, come on. I need a little more love than that. So every week I seem to have a theme. 
And this week's theme was Nebraska and Kansas. <laughs> I had a lot of clients from Nebraska and Kansas. I had a few sprinkled in that were not, but the majority of them were Nebraska and Kansas. And I had a lot of people this week where the wives had no insurance. You guys, your wives are equally as important as you and they need to be insured. I don't care if it's term insurance. Please go get those lovely ladies some death benefit because guess what? We don't live forever. And if something happens to them, you're going to want them covered. So those are my two, I had two themes this week. Um, and that was it. <clears throat> okay. Let's start. Let's start with the big guy. Um, the guy that made me think today. So I had a 60 year old, well, he was like 62, 63. And he has worked off the farm his whole life and he's farming while well, he's ranching. So he's got, well, I think he was doing both. He's farming and ranching. And so he's got some cows and um, he is needing an operating note. So he's got, he needs $175,000 for operating. He needs money to buy some more cows. And then he's got a land note. Okay, not a lot of loans, but big loans. And I said, well, what do you have in investments? Well, he's got 175,000 in investments, let's say. It was off a couple thousand, whatever. What he needs, he's got in investments. And he is paying seven and a half percent on his operating note. Like an insane high amount of interest. <clears throat> so I said, you want to buy, you know, a little over $200,000 worth of cows. You have $175,000 in investments and you have $175,000 in operating that you need. And the bank has given him a hard time. So I said, why don't you just use the money in operating or in your investments to operate with? It's just sitting there doing nothing, most likely not earning seven and a half percent. He said, well, I was thinking of using that for life insurance policy or to take it out and use it, just like you said, that, I, that thoughts crossed my mind, but I don't want to pay taxes on it. Um, and I said, well, you're going to have to pay taxes sooner or later. He's 62. So he doesn't have 59 and a half. He's past the 10% penalty. So I'm like, well, why don't you just take some out? Well, I'm going to have to pay taxes. I'm going to have to pay more taxes. And I said, well, if you're not, are you going to be in a higher tax bracket? What does your wife work? So I get my calculator out that shows the tax brackets. He can make like another $50,000. The tax bracket doesn't change till he gets to like a hundred and some thousand. So he could take it out, but he's so worried about having to pay tax. Now think about it. You're either going to pay tax at 62 or when you're 72, they are going to require that you take what is called a required minimum distribution. And if you don't take that required minimum distribution, they're going to charge you a 50% tax. So you can either take it today at 62 slowly, right? He could take it all at once and use it for operating, but he's going to pay like $30,000 in taxes, or he could just take it slowly and use it to buy some cows along the way, use it for some operating along the way. I don't even care if he never does the infinite banking concept, but seven and a half percent interest. He's not making that in the market. The market's not even averaging that. And so, but this thought process was, well, I'm going to have to pay all these taxes. The, the thought process of, 
I'm either gonna pay them today or I'm gonna pay them tomorrow. It doesn't matter, they're getting paid. Didn't really cross his mind, I don't think. Because you're gonna pay them today, you're gonna pay them in three years, you're gonna pay them in five years, it doesn't matter. You are not avoiding those bad boys. They are going to get paid. <clears throat> what, so he's, you know, his thing is, is well, I wanna use it to start a policy. Well, I don't know if we should use it to start a policy. I don't, I still don't know. We still have unanswered questions. Whoops. We still have unanswered questions about other things that he needs to do with his finances. But can we move it into a policy over 10 years? Can we move it in over four years? I'm not sure what strategy we're going to use, but if he takes the cash, he's going to have more cash and then maybe pay himself back, which then becomes the premium payment. So there's a lot of strategies there. One of which was just go borrow money on the cattle, okay? If we move this money into a policy over four years, then at year four, he will have enough cash value to borrow and pay off the banknote. So now he has moved that banknote over to his control. And again, not sure what he wants to do there. Not sure what he's, how he's gonna do that because he has to talk to his accountant and see what's gonna happen with taxes because he has a corporation. So all these expenses for his farm are in a C Corp. None of that passes to him directly. It's not an S Corp, it's not an LLC, it's a C Corp. That stays in the C Corp. So he has to see, if I take this money out and buy cows with it, can I personally own those cows and then write those off on my personal taxes? So the other lesson here is a C Corp is great, right? Sometimes, sometimes, if we, a C Corp is great because you get stuck in like a 15% tax bracket and you never have to pay any more than that. However, none of those, that 15%, if you ever move money from the C Corp out to you personally, you're paying taxes on that again as well. And so um, a lot of these C Corps were set up many, many years ago when C Corps were a better option. And I talked to a guy last week, exact same thing happened. They were in a C Corp and I said, well, why are you in a C Corp? Well, that was a better option, you know, 25, 30 years ago <clears throat> than where they're at today, which it would be probably an S Corp. So very um, not abnormal because most, if you have an off the farm job, please pay attention. If you have an off the farm job, I said this last week and I'm gonna say it again this week. Why are you maxing out that 401k and IRA if you want to farm? I mean, I don't know why you're maxing it out either way, to be honest. And we all know that Mary Jo does not like the stock market. But we are maxing it out and I see it and I've seen it a few weeks in a row now with clients that are in their 60s that they are wondering how are they gonna get money out of this IRA, out of this 401k, and avoid these massive taxes. Everything in an IRA and a 401k is going to come to you as ordinary income, your highest tax bracket. So please consider that when you are putting money there and maxing it out, kudos to you. But you've given up liquidity, you've given up control, you've put it at risk, you then turn around and go to the bank and borrow the same amount of money that you have in your IRA and you pay a higher interest rate to the bank than you're probably making in your IRA. If this guy should decide to take all of his money tomorrow and buy cows with it and pay him back at himself back, at seven and a half percent rate of return, he will probably make more money than he would have made if he just left it in the market. And then he doesn't even have to answer to the bank. Because guess what? 
If he can't pay his line of credit back, his line of credit's 175. If he can't pay his line of credit back, what's he gonna do? Go to his IRA and grab it and have to take it all at once and have no write-off. Remember, Nelson teaches us, for those of you that don't know, our Nelson Nash is the founder of the infinite banking concept. Nelson teaches us in his book, it is one giant pool of money. It absolutely does not matter. One pool of money. How are you going to best utilize those dollars? So that was super awesome to be able to try to run some strategies with him. Now he has to talk to his accountant and then we have to come back again and revisit to see what strategy are we going to use to try to soften that tax burden and can he buy those cows on his own outside of the C Corp. And if y'all are wanting to do a C Corp, I would really talk to somebody besides an attorney. Um, the attorney, you're going to need both people. You need the attorney to help you set up the corporation and do all your meeting minutes right and all that good stuff. And then you need the accountant to help you figure out which one is best for taxes. Okay. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an attorney. We all specialize in what we're good at. And those people are good at those things. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Chandy. <laughs> you did, Shane. You were right on getting your wife insured. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Dave. How are you? Hi, Zane. Hi, Marsha. Six years. Good for you. Now that thing's really starting to pay off for you. You're capitalizing. Okay. Who do we have next? Um, I have a young guy who is working a full-time job in town and he has a side business because his job is only his job. Um, because of his job, he's not working five days a week. So he has like three or four days off. So he has another business and he's farming. But here we go, you guys. He doesn't even own anything besides a pickup because you don't have to, to farm. He's hiring it custom done, okay? Why? Because he doesn't want all the debt to go with it. And he's still making money and it's working. And so we're gonna do that until what? We can afford to buy our own stuff if that time comes. And so I had a couple of these conversations this week. You don't have to own the land. You don't have to own the cows and you don't have to own the equipment to farm. Many of you know that we bought acreage. We have barns, we have corrals. I cannot write any of my farm ground off as an expense unless I farm. I am happy to have some cows but I don't want to feed them and I don't want to calve them out. I love them, but I am busy helping you guys. I do not have time to be checking calves in the cows in the middle of the night, right? No, I fine. Somebody else can feed them. I will pay you to do that. If it is profitable, it's still going to be profitable. I'm not going to go into a losing venture. This kid understands that. So please understand, you do not need to have everything that the neighbor has who's been farming for 45 years because you want to be a farmer. He is making a profit because he is hiring it out at this point, right? He's still marketing his grain. He still has the operating expenses. He still has all that. He's just not the one doing the work because he's far, he's got an off the farm job. He too was maxing out his contributions to his 401k, to his Roth, to his HSA, everything 
was getting maxed out. And then he goes to the bank and borrows money. I'm like, do you still want to do that? Of course, his answer was probably not. I did not know a better way. I didn't know I could keep my money liquid and earning interest at the same time, right? And so after reading this little book, it very it's very helpful. And now he has a better way of doing things. Um, he too has, his family stuff is all in a corporation. A corporation, a C-Corp. You know, I really want you guys to think about generations to come if you're putting stuff in a corporation. And let's say that, let's say that my parents have a corporation, okay? And they leave it to us three kids. So they say, you guys all are gonna own equal shares of the corporation. All the land is going in there and you're all gonna own equal shares of the corporation. Well, that's fabulous. Until you got nine, 10 grandkids. And now we three pass it down to all the grandkids. And then what? Now there's 10 people that own this corporation. And some of them may not even know what the farm is. Some of them might not even have ever come or don't care. Now those 10 pass it down to theirs. Holy moly. You could get like 30 people in a corporation who don't even know who grandpa and grandma were. And I see this, this is a real thing. I see this. And so if you're going to pass it down to a corporation, be considerate and understand what's gonna happen in generations to come. You are diluting it in such a way that it's absolutely crazy. Like even my family, my one of my um, parents owns a fourth of a 16th because <laughs> there were 16 kids a fourth of a 16th really can we pass it off better that's great that we want to leave it to the immediate family members that's fantastic but we have to think beyond that is that really going to be the best option okay so just know you don't have to farm. You absolutely do not need to own equipment to farm. And he is a testimony to that. And I absolutely love it. And I have had other people do the exact same thing. They lease the ground, they run cows, they custom graze for people. So they're just running somebody else's cows, getting paid per day, don't own a cow, don't have a land payment. And they're making money and they're still ranching. Totally doable easy to find probably not but i didn't say it was going to be easy i said it's doable all right i had another couple who had filed bankruptcy and so this is a question that i don't get it we get it it's not a lot that we get this but we do get it um if you have filed bankruptcy I can't do anything on my side until two years after that bankruptcy has been cleared. So I can't help these people yet. We're about five years away from everything being, or three years away from every, five years to start a policy. Three years to have everything paid off, another two years for it to be cleared, and we're good. Um, but they're really wondering how can we do, the, how can we start over? And fantastic, they have the ambition they want to start over. They don't, they want to get out from underneath this. So when it's all done and all said and done, they have income coming in. Kudos to them. And I threw a lot of ideas at them. And I heard a lot of, oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's really hard. You know, the problem with that is, you guys, whatever you think, that's what you're going to get in return. If you think it's gonna be hard, if you think it's impossible, you're gonna get impossible, right? And again, he thought, well, I need to go buy $200,000 worth of cows. Do you need to go buy $200,000 worth of cows? Or do you 
just need to find somebody who needs cows run for them. And you can run the cows and you can get paid every day and you have no risk. Oh, well, in our country. In your country, what? I said, can you do some rotational grazing so that you can run, you know, more cows on the same amount of land? And he said, well, oh, that doesn't work here. I said, oh, oh, I, no, mm -mm. That, that's where it like ended. <laughs> that's where the Mary Jo German fashion came out. I'm like, no, 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 no. I've talked to those guys teaching rotational grazing and everybody says that. Just like everybody says, oh, this infinite banking thing doesn't work for everybody. It's just the select few. Oh, whatever. It may not work for every single person, but it works. And it's more than a select few. And so is it that we say, oh, we can't do this because we don't know about it and we've chosen not to educate ourselves? Or is it that we say we can't do it because we just don't think we can do it? We have got, in a lot of cases, we have got to change our mindset. And having a negative mindset is not going to get us anywhere. I had a gentleman this week that I talked to a year ago and he was in a very similar position. He did not have to file bankruptcy, I don't think. It was a year ago. Um, but we touched base again today because now the ranch is, he's bought a ranch, he's ready to start over. But what did he say? What I did before was wrong, so I am doing everything I can to learn as much as I can to change what I'm doing. We need to go there, right? And this couple is awesome, and they are starting that process. And it takes a long time to reprogram our brains to say, oh, that's possible. If we need money, can you do network marketing? Can you sell seed? Can you sell fertilizer? Can you sell feed? Can you, what can you do? Is there a local store that you can sell something for, that you can go to work for? What are these other things? Where are there needs in the world that need to be fulfilled and you can fulfill them? Figure out how to do it and do it. You cannot sit home and say, I hope something changes and something's gonna change. That is not how it works. You know how many people see farming without the bank and say, oh, I wish, that's not possible. You will never be a client of mine because that's not possible. You didn't even open the darn book. You didn't even get to the position of where you wanted to order the book. Kudos to this couple for absolutely looking and, and wanting to learn, right? Now we just need to take the next step. But if you sit back and say, oh, that's not possible, it's not going to be possible. Absolutely not going to be possible. Look for the opportunities and go and take them. Because we got ourselves into a position of bankruptcy, we need to figure out how to get ourselves out of that and not repeat that cycle. Okay. I didn't expect that German passion to come out. Um, another gentleman that, this is so awesome. I love, um, I love when people buy my audio book and they are either driving a lot or they're working in a job like this gentleman works in a chicken farm and or a poultry farm whatever you want to call it and so i have had a couple of people that work at poultry farms and i don't think they talk to their other employees all day i mean i'm not sure what goes on in a poultry farm but they listen to a lot of podcasts and so he's like yeah i've listened to your book like a hundred times and every single time i heard something new and i've listened to all your podcasts so if you can beat this guy, you let me know. Um, but it proves that if you listen to the book more than once, you're going to hear something that you did not hear the first time. Anyway, he and his wife want to start their own farm. And so really it's just a matter of figuring out how much can we save and getting over Parkinson's law. So it was interesting while we were visiting 
he said, well, I really wanted a new pickup. And I said, two weeks ago, we're going to town and we're getting a new pickup. And I don't care what you say, I am buying that new F-250. He got to town, they ran the payments and it was like $1,000 a month. And he said, I don't need a new F-250. Why did he say that? Because he had listened to my book a hundred times and he realized Parkinson's law was getting the best of him. Parkinson's law, for those of you that do not know, is our needs rise to meet our income and the luxury once enjoyed now becomes a necessity. He wanted that pickup and if he didn't beat Parkinson's law, it would have grabbed a hold of him and he would have went and bought that truck. And I said, okay. So you could have bought it and you decided not to. Yep. I said, so you're essentially saving $1,000 a month because you are more than willing to pay the dealership $1,000 a month for this vehicle. Yep. So why isn't that $1,000 a month going into a policy for premium? Let's capitalize the policy. Let's take that money, let's put it into the policy and then when you're ready to buy the next F-250, you just borrow from the policy to do so. We have, if we truly want to get away from the banking system, in some cases, we are going to have to beat Parkinson's law. The faster we can get away from the banking system, excuse me, the more money that we can start with, the faster we get away from the banking system. How much money we start with determines how much we wanna beat Parkinson's law, right? Do we really need that F-250? And I had another gentleman in, the, in a very similar situation today who had, he has a great farm operation He's got hogs, he's farming, he's got two businesses that he's running. He is doing great. He has a couple hundred thousand dollars of profit, net profit a year. No idea where that money is going. And he just, he's like, no, you must have figured my numbers wrong. Well, we went over his numbers and we went over his numbers and I'm like, nope, I'm pretty sure your bookkeeper is keeping your numbers correctly. I am pretty sure you have this but we don't know where it's going, right? So are we spending cash on fixing up the farm? What are we doing? And he said the same thing. Well, I'm going to need a combine in a couple years. I said, okay, if your combine payment's gonna be $12,000 a year, what have you bought? If you needed that combine today, what have you went and bought that combine today? Yep. I said, so you'd have made the $12,000 payment. Yep, I'd have figured out how to do it. I could do it. Okay, so then what you're telling me is you could make that $12,000 payment today into a policy to capitalize your system so when you need that combine, you've got the money to buy that combine. Oh, yep, right? Because in most cases, if we need a tractor today, if we need a combine, if we need a baler, all of a sudden we figure out how to we go borrow the money and we figure out how we're going to make that payment and we make the payment. But if we didn't have the payment, we wouldn't have had the money. Because why? We don't pay attention to where this money is going. The more we can put away, the faster we capitalize, the faster we get away from the bank. How badly do you want to beat Parkinson's law? How badly do you want to get away from the bank? Okay. I had another guy who's farming with dad and the uncle. Um, the uncle has no children, but we don't know what's gonna happen. What might happen is again, another C corporation. So there's four owners of the C corporation now. 
when those four owners pass away, there are going to be six owners of the C Corporation. Um, and so he's pretty lucky that at this point, it's only six owners of the C Corporation. And so really having to figure out what is going to happen with that C Corporation. Am I going to be able to buy somebody out of it? Because two people already sold out of it, which is good because that would have been seven more cousins in the C Corporation. Um, but in this guy's situation, he had to refinance a loan. And this drove me crazy and it drives me crazy. And the German passion comes out with this too. But he bought cattle in 2015, 2014, 2015, when cattle prices were high. And his uncle was selling and wanting to get out and he bought his uncle's cows. He obviously, 2016 comes and cattle prices fall and they've been low since. So now how am I gonna pay for these cows, right? So the bank, being as kind-hearted as they are, said, I will restructure your loans and we will consolidate some loans. So we're going to put your cattle in with your equipment, in with an operating note that you could not pay. Oh, for the love of Pete. They do this to be kind and to make your payments affordable. But please pay attention. If you are taking a four year old, if you have a loan, you know, he's already had loans on these cows for five years, six years. How many of these cows are going to town or already went to town? So you now have a loan that you're paying, you're stretching it out maybe another five to 10 years. Those cattle are long gone, dead. They're not producing at all. If you held over replacements, now you're paying interest on replacements. And you better hope that those replacements are along, around long enough to carry out that loan. <clears throat> but you basically are paying for your replacements. You know, if you wanna restructure a loan, fine. If you wanna roll it all into one so you can decrease the payment and stay alive, fine, whatever. But you need to know how much of that payment was cattle before. And you need to make that same payment. So let's say for example, cattle were $10,000 a year and your new payment is $25,000 a year. I don't want you just paying $25,000 a year. I want you making a $35,000 a year payment if you can, because we need to get the cattle portion of that paid off. If you can help it, don't let the bank take cattle and stretch them out and run them into an equipment loan or into a operating note that you couldn't get paid off. Think about that. I had another client call today and he said, well, I'm gonna restructure some loans. I'm like, what? <laughs> and because him and I have a very good relationship, I'm like, what are you doing? And so we went through all of his numbers and I said, do not let them restructure. Uh, what was his loan for? I wrote it down. Let me look, let me look. Um, he has an operating note. Okay, in his particular case, he has $65,000 of freed up money because he paid his cattle off. They're, they're paid off, 65 grand a year. Next year, next fall, he is not gonna have to make that payment. He has $30,000 on operating left and he has 30,000 on a bailer that's left. He could pay those off next fall because he doesn't have a cattle payment anymore. But what, is the loan, what does the bank want to do? Restructure that loan. And I said, because he's scared of the drought and having to buy hay and just because of the area he's in. Legitimate concerns. And I'm glad that he's looking forward to save himself, right? But I said, you go ahead and restructure that loan. But 
Don't let them drag that bailer out for 10 years. Are you going to have that bailer for 10 years? 15 years? 20 years? Do not allow them to do that. If you want to restructure it, great. But we're going to pay that thing off early if we can. Because the interest rates aren't fantastic. He wants to not have any bank debt. His goals are not exactly the same as everybody else's because everybody thinks differently about it. And so if we're going to restructure a loan, make sure that we're restructuring a loan and not paying on something that we've either sold or quit using or traded off or whatever. Because you're going to go upside down in a really, really quick manner. And I see it happen a lot. And people can't keep track of everything then. What's paid off, what's not paid off, because it's all wrapped up into one. There's like three or four loans into one. That's great if we're wrapping up two different pieces of land and refinancing. That's great if we're wrapping up some old um, operating we can't use. But it's not great when we're wrapping up equipment and cattle that are going to be sold. And now we're paying on something that we don't have anymore. All right, I got, I have another um, client, 25 year old, single female this time, a single young, young lady who is a ranch hand. And so that was fun to talk to her. And she is as frugal as my single men that I talk about that could live in a box. And she has all sorts of um, cash saved up to buy cows. And so she's like, well, you know, she has about 60,000 saved and needs about 70 to buy cows. And so she's like, well, should I put the money in the policy first? What should I do? Well, if we put all the money in the policy, we have to capitalize. So we're not going to have it all right away. So maybe we need to buy the cows and then pay yourself back every year for seven years. And that becomes your premium payment, right? Or do we need 50 cows right away? Can we buy 25? Pay cash for them. Add five or 10 a year. Pay cash for them, right? She doesn't want to hold any replacements over because it's going to take two years to make any money off those girls. So can we just start slower? Do we have to jump in with both feet and then get wrapped up with FSA? Can we wait just a little bit so we don't have to do that, right? It is, we don't have to go big or go home. That was probably another theme I had this week in reality when I sit back and think about it. I had a lot of go big or go home mentalities. Let's start small. The guy that she's working for is great. He wants to mentor her. He wants to help her get started. And there's some land that's for sale. And he says, well, I want that land. Maybe we should partner and you can get an FSA loan. Max it out. That's how I got started. That's not in her comfort zone. How are we going to pay for that? We don't have the longest relationship with him to know that everything's going to work out. We don't know what's happening with his operation and his family dynamics. There's a lot to be figuring out before you just jump in. And she is super smart and she gets that. And she's like, nope, I don't think that that is for me. I want to start slower. And so remember, we don't, and it's the same thing I told my client this week that had, that had bankruptcy. It's not big or go home. You can start small, work your way into it. Nobody said that there's anything wrong with that. Because guess what? If you can't make a profit off a of 10 head of cows and manage that, you're not going to be able to make a profit and manage a hundred head. It doesn't matter. It's all relative. So if you can't make a profit off of 120 acres and figure that out, what makes you think that there's going to be more, right? And most of the time we're going big because we bought all this acreage and we need all these cows to run on it. We bought all this land and we need all this equipment to farm on it. Did we need to buy that big? If you want to take that risk, great, but not everybody needs to take that risk. 
She's 25. Uh, she's probably got like 60 years. She'll probably be okay. Talked about that guy. I talked about everybody. I wrapped him up all into one. Um, I talked about everybody, you guys. I was, I normally go down my list, but so many people had similar things that I just wrapped everybody up into one. Okay. Oh, um, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between loans and premium payments. But in the meantime, if you have questions, please let me know in the comments and then I will make sure that I get those answered. Um, Winnie, you are correct. Hey, Jim from Wisconsin. Think like a Martian. Hey, Joe. I don't know what you're in the middle of. Bankruptcy? If you are, I'm sorry. Hi, Sarita. You are correct, Marcia. Marsha. Marsha. <laughs> Can't pronounce names. <laughs> Oh, Bruce, I do have a little bit of fire passion tonight, don't I? Okay, here's the deal. Um, my client that I visited with today said, Mary Jo, I want to put, I have seven, here's his, here's his um, thought. I have $7,000 in savings. I need to pay a guy for bulls I owe. I owe a guy money for bulls. I, and he said, so should I put it in the policy first or should I use cash or what do I do? And I said, well, you could put it in the policy first, but he needs like, he has like 7,000 and he needs like 7,300. So when we put money in the policy, we don't get access to all of that like we get access to like 90% of it, right? So it would have made him a little bit short. So I said, well, why don't you go to the bank, withdraw the $7,000 and pay the dude for the bulls. Now you paid him for the bulls, but you need bulls every two years. You're replacing them every two years. Yep. Pay yourself back $3,500 the next two years. So in two years, <coughs> excuse me, you have, <coughs> so in two years, you have the $7,000 you need to buy your next set of bulls because he spends the same amount every year. But that 3,500, because he has a loan on his policy. So, I said that $3,500 does not go into the policy as a loan repayment. It goes in as a premium payment because that will then increase cash value. So if you have $10,000 in cash value and you put $3,500 in as a loan or as a premium payment, you now have $13,500, okay? If he puts it in as a loan repayment and he had a $10,000 loan, now he only has $7,000 to borrow against after two years. He doesn't have 13, he has seven. And so a loan repayment is just putting back what you borrowed. A premium payment is adding to cash value and increasing the value of it. <clears throat> So if we're it depend if we're going to use cash, okay, if you are going to buy something with cash and then you want to pay yourself back, 
That does not go in as a loan repayment. That needs to go in as a premium payment. And I know that I have a podcast on this. Um, and I feel like I am a horrible explainer of this. Like, I feel like I need to draw it out so people understand that. Because a loan payment and a premium payment are two completely different things. Premium payment increases our cash value and makes us money. Loan repayments don't make us any money. We're just repaying something so we can use it again. We're not increasing the amount we get to take next time. And so make sure that if you have not listened to the podcast, go and listen to my podcast so that you understand that. Um, but something that I think is very, very important because a lot of people do not understand the difference between the two. Again, a very good reason as to why you need an infinite banking practitioner and a coach to help you with this process. Because some Joe Schmo who's gonna sell you insurance is not going to understand what we're trying to do here. That strategy in particular, they would have most likely screwed that up. <clears throat> <coughs> I have a tickle of my throat from all the fiery passion, as Bruce calls it. <clears throat> if you have questions on that after you listen to the podcast, <clears throat> let me know. Email me. If you're a client, let's talk about it. I will be happy to draw that out for you because that is super, 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 super important. If you are looking for an agent to help you with this process, please let me know. That's what I'm here to do. That is what I love to do is help you understand this. <clears throat> I'm not here just to sell some life insurance. I'm here to teach an infinite banking concepts, teach the infinite banking concept. Okay. If you are listening and have not gotten the book, I think that's crazy, but it's awesome that you're here. So, if you have not, if you have not gotten farming without the bank, get that one. If you really want to understand this, get both of these. <clears throat> Again, this week I had Dave Ramsey fans and they said the exact same thing. Dave Ramsey is great because he allowed me to get out of debt and to show me the debt snowball and all this good stuff, but he doesn't show me how to create cash flow. He doesn't understand farming. Right? So please just give them a shot if you're listening. And then be on the lookout for Life Without the Bank because that book should be here in like three weeks and we should have it on the website ready to purchase. So I am excited about this new book um, as well. <clears throat> and, and be on the lookout and keep watching our Facebook page because we're gonna do an introductory price on that. It is a $20 book, but we are not gonna sell it for $20 right away. It'll probably be like five or 10 or something. Um, so make sure that you are watching for that. <laughs> oh, Lynn, I, I just need to maybe drink whiskey. <clears throat> I am not a big drinker. Uh, Yes, Joe. Oh my gosh, isn't that, that is absolutely right. See, I'm so glad you were on here to, to validate my craziness. A C corporation and restructuring that, and it's hard to restructure a corporation. It's not an easy task. Um, oh my goodness, good luck to you. And when we are so far removed from the farm, I talked to a guy a couple weeks ago that he's like, they've never even been to the farm. Like there are people in this corporation, they don't even know where it's at. And we are talking third generation. They're, they're not that far removed, but they've never been there, right? The grand, they're like the great grandkids. The grandkids have never come back to see grandpa and grandma at the farm. So they have no idea who these people even are. So, 
these C corporations are not, in my opinion, they are not the answer for a long-term handoff, which is why a lot of people are doing them. Okay, if you <clears throat> need anything, you can go to farmingwithoutthebank.com, order your books, there's t-shirts there, there's videos there. I had a farm finance conference a few years ago when we could still get together and do things. Um, and that is all on video and you will hear from Nelson himself if you get that farm finance conference video. If you get the book, you will hear from Nelson himself. Um, so if you guys need anything, if you have questions, if you want topics covered on podcasts, whatever, you can message me here on Facebook or you can email me at maryjo at withoutthebank.com. And yes, I answer those. And yes, we have real people in my office that answer the phone and talk to you. If you order the book, we deliver, we ship them from here. We are real people. We don't, <laughs> so many people think that I have this huge corporation and they're never gonna get to talk to me. Um, my goal is to keep that somewhat small. Like there's a, there's a few of us, but I love talking to you guys. That is like my absolute favorite part of the day is to hear about what you're doing. I had a guy today that was tractor pulling and that was exciting because my dad tractor pulled. And so I got to talk about tractor pulling. <laughs> so, and it wasn't farm related, but it was fun, right? It was fun. Um, Cause you're my people. So let me know if there's absolutely anything that I can do to help or answer. Um, I am happy to do that. Otherwise I'm done. I have covered it all and I got it done exactly in an hour again. Gosh, my timing, I tell you. Someday I might use less words, but I would not bank on that. God gifted me to talk. <laughs> okay, you guys have an absolutely fantastic night. Thank you again for um, joining me and listening. I appreciate it. And I will see you next Thursday.